came to work in 1964 and went to the full-scale tunnel, worked there until 1971. And so what did engineer. you do in the full-scale tunnel? I was a test engineer and did all of the things that a test engineer did. Flight tests, I mean free flying, static fork tests, everything. I came to work here at Langley in 1944 and I retired in 1980. I was in the free flight tunnel and uh, we, we, were, we would fly models in the, in the tunnel. We could tilt the tunnel so that the model would fly. Then the models kept getting bigger and bigger, so they finally they moved us over to full scale tunnel. I went to work in full scale tunnel on June 10th, 1958. It was still NACA, but we knew NASA was coming. And I went to work in the boundary layer and helicopter branch, working on vertical lift. In my latter several years, I went there because I had a considerable interest in stability and control, whether it be of missiles or aircraft. And I had been involved in some of the supersonic cruise research aircraft studies done here at Langley. I worked over in the uh, full-scale tunnel, or 30 by 60, from 1977 uh, to March of 1990. And so I have a lot of fond memories of it. I worked in the full-scale tunnel the fall quarter of 1979, back when Virginia Tech had quarters. I miss those days. I worked in full scale. Joe Johnson had me hand plotting on graph paper data that the engineers might or might not have looked at back in the days when there was no Excel. My first experiment was a 35 foot span, six propeller, VTOL deflected slipstream, VTOL aircraft. And uh, we tested it and we analyzed the data and we gave we measured air loads on the on the on the wing and that particular result has been referred to many 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 times by some other people I, I'm, I'm aware of that so I know that data exists I worked on several large-scale projects uh, really applied some of the uh, knowledge from school, which is kind of hard to do sometimes, but anyway, it worked out really nicely. And um, uh, the very easy project, the uh, the large scale atlet, uh, the fu the uh, full scale F-106, which was cut in half, so it's a semi span F-53, is what we call it. There was considerable interest in the late 70s, early 80s to apply vortex flaps to the leading edges of some of these highly swept wings which would greatly improve the lifting capability for low speed landing, but there was not a severe drag penalty imposed after our fabrication shop people had reinforced the ribs so that it wouldn't, fuselage wouldn't do like so. And then a contractor came from California and cut it in half in about three days. We accomplished that with his salary, his use of a vehicle, his per diem, and perhaps a little profit from the small, for the small company that he worked for, $5,000. It was fun. There was always something interesting going on. I remember one time I was trying to run a test and we got interrupted by uh, Neil Armstrong's uh, uh, lunar lander and, and it kept delaying my test and delaying my test and it was like six months before I could get in because they were still running that particular test, trying to make it safe so that they could go to the moon. So were you peeved that uh, the lunar lander? No, not really, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we were just as much interested in what they were doing as, uh, as anything else. Oh, I did. Supersonic transports, the PA-30 type of the fighters, X, uh, F-15, F-14, the C-5A, we did the externally blown jet flap work, all of those things. So when you look at airplanes, do you think about the full-scale tunnel? Oh yeah, yeah, I know, know that there's a heritage there that goes right back to that tunnel and solve some specific problems. We also tested a Burt Rutan airplane that was a joined wing. His plan was to use it for crop dusting, but the um, span-wise flow was horrendous. It never made that. Obviously, you haven't seen any crop dusters that are joined wing 
Anyway, we got to play with, um, we put tufts on for Flovis, and we also had the opportunity to play with clay. We tried to modify things with clay. Uh, I ran a number of tests. I ran uh, a rotor test on uh, uh, hinges rotors. Uh, we lost a rotor during the test, and it smashed into one of the steel struts right about, just about this high above the stairway. So if you had a tall guy going up the stairs, he would have lost his head. I ran uh, tests with a main rotor and tail rotor. I lost a rotor. <laughs> uh, it went flying up through the roof and punched a hole in the roof. I did tests on uh, a stop rotor aircraft. Um, we lost a rotor. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I'm an ace. I've lost at least five rotors in different tests. Uh, some of the times that was pretty serious, but uh, it was it was it was good. I enjoyed it. I view it as probably one of the most unique uh, training experiences that this center has. Basically. Uh, came to work here and had been here about a year as a GS-9. Uh, I'm running night shift. I've got 13 guys I'm responsible for. I'm responsible for a test. And more or less, you know, I'm getting experience in people management. I'm getting experience in my technical field of aerodynamics. And I'm getting experience because of the models and design and, and, and manufacturing, really. So it, it, it was a very good basis for me. Uh, to uh, build on, you know, as, as I moved into other areas at the center. All the people were good people to work with. Um, Joe Walker was the head of the shop group. Uh, he, he didn't take any guff from engineers. Uh, he, uh, he taught us more than we taught him. Uh, the engineers always helped each other. I went in that first test and I had a mentor. And uh, the, the mentor made sure I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, everybody watched out for each other. Uh, I, even the, the, the newest technician was trying to help people. Most of the folks were not only wind tunnel technicians, but just about every one of them were qualified aircraft mechanics. And all of that kind of helped you when you were trying to do, do your job. Actually, coming there was a great experience. Uh, met a lot of great people. Uh, they mentored me, and um, and hopefully, uh, I was able to do the same, mentoring a lot of the students. There were bit. It was a really um, fun facility. Uh, a lot of the co-op students came uh, through that organization. It was a very good place uh, for co-ops to come. The job was pretty well defined. You knew what you were going to be doing. They had a clear cut thing. It wasn't like some co-ops where you're not clear. This from the get-go, you knew you were going to be involved with the wind tunnel test in some capacity or whatever. I must say the actual plotting was kind of boring, especially because I don't know if the engineers ever looked at it because they would have them overnight plots back in the days when they had the CalComp plots that plotted. So that part of it is like going, Joe, do I need to do this? But I never said anything. I, it was a great opportunity. I'd rather be in the window watching. And for some reason, I think they might have actually done like some free flying models. I think it was the Yankee. Are you familiar with that? And when I co opt up at Wallops, the interesting thing was they were flight testing it. So they flight tested it at Wallops, and then I was involved with the wind tunnel test down here on the same airplane. So that was kind of cool. Luckily, and very interestingly, uh, when I was in free flight tunnel, I had worked with VTOL aircraft. When I got over to the full scale, two of the models that I worked with, I was working full scale. So I found that, that very interesting. And uh, I, well, I retired then in 1980, and part of my time was with the full scale tunnel where we had a real nice time and a good group. I just had a good time. It was uh, it was it was interesting. It was fun. 
I, I remember a series of tests where we were running two shifts and I didn't have enough engineering help, so I worked two shifts. And it was still fun, even though I did get stopped on the way home by the policeman for driving too fast because I was trying to get home and go to bed. <laughs> I feel like I'm very, I've been very fortunate, very blessed to, uh, to have worked there. Um, I kind of grew up, uh, you know, back in the 50s and uh, and, and, you know, there were a lot of things going on with airplanes and the development of new airplanes and went through school and the first thing I did was I opened a textbook in aeronautics uh, and it had the full-scale tunnel and lo and behold, I never, never dreamed that I would have uh, been working there.